All right, today's uh, Digital Dimensions quick tip is uh, getting uh, 3D point data from a SOLIDWORKS part file. Uh, I've got an example here of where you might have two intersection surfaces uh, running into each other. Uh, could be a plane running into a body, could be a surface body running into a surface body, but you're wanting some points that essentially establish uh, the, uh, the curve in between those two planes. Um, or surfaces. So I'll go and select uh, both of the uh, surface bodies. I'll go and go up to my tools menu, down to sketch tools, and I'll go and grab intersection curve. Intersection curve is actually good for lots of other things besides what we're doing today, but it's great to, to find the intersection between a plane and a, a face or two surface bodies. Alright, so intersection curve, what that does is gives us a 3D sketch uh, with a 3D spline. Uh, so I'll go and exit that first 3D sketch that it created for me. Uh, and then I'll go and come up here and I'll switch and create a new 3D sketch. Uh, from here all I'm going to do is grab my sketch point and drop myself a bunch of points along that edge there. Uh, and this will be the data points that I want. Whoops, that one didn't quite get on there. I'll get that one back into place. Uh, and I'll go and move that onto the 3D spline there. In fact, let's go and hide our other points. Okay, so we've got all those points on the uh, the spline there. I'll go and exit my sketch just so you can see it better too. I'll go and hide my uh, surface bodies, uh, and then I'll go and hide my initial uh, uh, intersection curve sketch as well, so you can see just the points. So those are the points that I'm wanting uh, the x y z coordinates. You select on an individual point, you'll see in the bottom edge there of SolidWorks that it gives you the the points. Uh, if I go into the sketch, I can even get that readout showing up on the left. But those are all the data points that I'm wanting. Uh, these points could be dimensioned away from each other uh, if you wanted specific heights, or you could establish reference planes as well. Um, end result, get your points where you want them to be. I'll go ahead and select this uh, sketch. I'm going to do a copy. So I'll go edit, copy. I'm going to start a new part here. So part millimeter. Doesn't matter the units, uh, depends on what you're wanting to, to spit out. I'll go and paste that new sketch in there. Edit, paste, uh, and then again verify that I get the units that I want, millimeters or inches. Uh, I've got my points in a separate uh, part now. So from here I'm going to go uh, Save As, and I'm going to change my type to IGES. Okay. And before I save it though, I do need to actually give myself a location uh, or some options here for the uh, uh, the settings. I'm going to turn on the wireframe. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you do B splines or parametric splines. I'm going to leave mine as B splines. Don't need the curve features. We do need the sketch entities, and we don't need or we do need the high trim. The other two options I'll go and turn off, and then we'll go and close that. From here, I'll go and save this. I just file it out. I'll just call this one export. And that is saved. So let's go and take a look at that file. Uh, folder, we've got our IGES files. I'm going to go and rename that to a .txt to change the extension. Uh, yes, I do want to switch the extension. I'll go and open that up in a text file. So this is how the IGES data is actually stored in that file. Uh, it's essentially a, a text format. Uh, the points that we're worried about, though, are all these ones that start out with the 116. So let me go and open that up in Excel so we can actually uh, clean up the data here a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to do a regular file open in Excel. Uh, I'll go and grab out my text file uh, because I've got it set to all types uh, to open there. Go and open. And this is where you need to change a couple of settings. We are going to do delimited uh, for the style. We'll go next. And it's delimited by comments. So that's the separators is what we're looking at. I'm going to go next and finish there. So now we have all of our data in there. We'll get rid of the top uh, rows that we don't need. Uh, I'll just go and delete those out. Uh, and then I'll get rid of the extra columns that we don't need. Delete those out as well. Uh, and then I've got some extra rows here at the bottom that I'll go and delete. Uh, so in fact we don't even need this first column. We'll delete that out as well. And then we have our three columns that we needed. So we've got our uh, X uh, column here, we got our Y, and we got our Z. Uh, and then I could use that to, to send over to a CMM, or I could use that for uh, bringing back into SOLIDWORKS if I wanted to. I'd probably leave off the top header. 
um, but it's a great way of getting all your, your point data out of SOLIDWORKS, uh, maybe for evaluation and stuff. Anyways, uh, thanks again for your time. That's uh, today's quick tip from Digital Dimensions.